Hi everyone, it is still May 25, 2019. I want to thank my subscriber for sending along this article. The U.S. Army asked Twitter how service has impacted people. The answers were gut-wrenching. I will link below to the article. I will link below to that Twitter page, which, uh, well, I'm quite surprised it's still up. I actually uh, read a lot of these tweets, and there are a lot of them, from service members of the U.S. military writing in how service has impacted their lives, and it is gut-wrenching. And I really appreciate the truth. And you get a lot of truth here. And then you get the tweets that say, wow, I don't think they expected this. All right, well, we'll get to that. But you know what? These holidays of ours, I've never really understood them. I understood July 4th, but I never understood how it is that we celebrate our holidays by barbecuing hamburgers and hot dogs and, well, drinking a lot of beer, getting drunk. That's how a lot of Americans spend their holidays. Um, the Memorial Day, it's supposed to be for remembering those who died while serving our great U.S. military. Those who died protecting our freedom. Oh, I know that I'm going to get a lot of flack. But look, it's time to face the truth of who we are as a people, what this country has always been about. I just want to go over, well, just the headlines of some articles. America has been at war 93% of the time. Of Well, this was back in uh, 2015, so you can add, you know, the uh, four years. So it's 200 and 26 years out of our 233 years. Since 1776, we have been at war 93% of our time, only being at peace for 21 years. What does that say about us? <clears throat> does it say that, well, a lot of people really wanted to uh, destroy our freedom and we had to protect our freedom so we launched war for 226 years or could it have something to do with that manifest destiny you know that that doctrine that uh, drove the US expansion you know just of the North American continent and then it went on to the South American continent. Oh, and, well, actually, it's all over the world. All over the world. Manifest destiny. Right. Our God-given right to expand dominion over all countries. Yeah. We will manifest our destiny by killing and stealing land stealing countries, destroying them, because the United States is destined by God to go on killing and destroying and stealing, all the while maintaining the delusion that somehow Americans are just exceptional. They're moral giants, caring and compassionate souls, and nothing could be further from the truth. So if you regard truth as sacrosanct, yes, it will bring you to the reality of who we are as a people and what this country is about. We are a violent, extremely violent people. Yeah, but we like to think of ourselves as good and moral and upright. You know, I don't think anyone today could say seriously that our service members 
are in how many countries are they in? Oh, I think we have bases like in virtually every country in the world. And those bases are there to protect our freedom. And our service members are in Iraq and Afghanistan and Syria and, and uh, just all over Somalia, Africa, a lot of countries in Africa. And uh, we're taking over Venezuela. Our, how could an adult American say seriously that their service is to protect our freedom while we're losing it rapidly? That's the great delusion. And that delusion, yeah, it does need to be shattered. The U.S. has killed more than 20 million people in 37 victim nation since World War II. And of course, Trump regime heightens Middle East tensions and he's sending troops, a thousand or two thousand. Yes, uh, the Iranian threat. Oh my God. Gulf of Tonkin crisis. Yes. We lie, we cheat, we steal, we kill innocent people we continue on with these official narratives that are such a friggin' joke. And we celebrate Memorial Day. It's scary. It is truly scary what we are, who we are, and what we have become when it becomes so obvious, so obvious, that what we are, uh, are we spreading democracy? No, we're spreading our evil all over the world. When it becomes obvious and you still have people maintaining that delusion, that's when it becomes very scary. You're living in a country that is truly well, a psychiatric institution. Rand Corporation. How to destroy Russia. Yay! Let's destroy another country. Shielding the world from U.S. chaos. Not an easy task. That's right. Not an easy task. Because we're all about economic terrorism, threats of war, waging war, dropping bombs. You know, with those... Uh, peaceful uh, service members that sit in these uh, nice comfy seats playing what essentially is a war game. You know, they're at the controls and they're controlling those drones from New Mexico, uh, dropping drones on innocent people in countries, well, Middle Eastern countries certainly, and oh wow, thank you for your service. Russia condemns U.S. warships off Venezuela's coast. Says coup attempts ongoing. That's right. We don't stop. We don't stop. We just can. We we just plow on ahead. White House to send another 2,000 troops to counter credible Iranian threat. And it's all bullshit. It's all a lie. But hey, I don't care. I don't care because I'm an American and I'm living a comfortable life and go away from me. Don't don't bring the truth near me. I don't want to hear it. Trump bypasses Congress to approve eight billion in arms sales to Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Yeah, because Saudi Arabia, the UAE, oh well, they're peaceful countries. And they don't have dictators, you know. It, we have to go after Assad in Syria. That that mad, crazy dictator. Oh, and um, and uh, Maduro in Venezuela. The, 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 these are the crazy people. And Saudi Arabia beheading, you know, people. Who cares, you know. Uh, we're right there with you, huh. We're right there with you. And we're going to sell you. Eight billion in arms sales. We are 
We, we truly are the most dangerous terrorist organization on the planet. That's the U.S. government and military. The most dangerous criminal terrorist organization on the planet. Iran's leadership at highest level ordered attacks on pipeline tankers. That's from our Pentagon. Of course, they have no evidence. They have no evidence, but no, we can just say this. Because you know what? The American people, they love their liars and they believe what we say. So we'll just keep saying it. And even if they don't believe it, they don't care. So we can say whatever the hell we want. <laughs> and that's what we've been doing my entire life. How the West's war in Libya spurred terrorism in 14 countries. Yeah, well, we go in, we bomb, <clears throat> based on a lie, and uh, we take over. Um, and then we don't give a shit about all of the chaos and terrorism that we, we actually planted there and then it just grows like Iraq you know the same thing happened in Iraq oh not, Iraq had nothing to do with 9-11 but do we care no no of course we don't care celebrate Memorial Day and all those who died for our freedom US warns Assad against using chemical weapons as fighting escalates in Syria do you know did you know this is coming up again Oh my God, it's like every spring we have this same narrative that comes out. So, oh, and I'm sure you must have heard that those chemical weapons, you know, that Trump came out and said, Assad used chemical weapons against his own people and I'm going to bomb. I'm not going to investigate and I'm not going to wait for any investigation. I don't need intel. I'm Trump. So I'm bombing. That's it. And we can just blame Assad as, you know, the crazy animal that he is. Yeah, Trump is so unbelievable. Talk about, talk about being so unbelievably sick, deranged. The things that comes out of that man's mouth, well, he does reflect the American people. Now, what did he say? If Iran threatens the United States again, we will wipe them off the planet or destroy Iran. Oh my God. And we support these people. We've got to come out of our delusion here because we are a very violent, sick country. And yeah, the country is made up of the people. So um, now they're claiming uh, he, my God, Never has an investigation shown that Assad was responsible for any of the chemical attacks, even during the Obama years. So now, the chemical attack that occurred uh, last year or two years ago when Trump just decided to bomb, um, released was a uh, an investigation that was supposed to be part of the UN report and oh that part never made it into the report that showed that oh evidence points to the rebels once again the US supported and funded rebels but now we're doing it again are you kidding and the American people do, where are they with this I mean we're we're hearing such sick twisted lies that are so obvious now and the American people dead asleep dead asleep US complicity in Israel's violations of international law the US and Israel are hand in hand there's complicity our complicity no we're joined at the hip so yes I am very grateful for every service member here and family members to have, well, contributed to what the United uh, States Army 
their Twitter page, how has surfing impacted you? Because they're listening to this guy who's talking about how the service impacted him. Serve something greater than myself. Army's afforded me the opportunity to do just that, to uh, give to others, to protect the ones I love, and to better myself as a man and a warrior. As a man and a warrior. USA, USA, USA. I'm ready to go and kill innocent people and take over their country, destroy it, take it over. Hey, I'm great. Please. Well, and this is the U.S. Army saying to everyone who responded to this thread, thank you for sharing your story. Your stories are real, they matter, and they may help others in similar situations. The Army is committed to the health, safety, and well-being of our soldiers. We honor those who paid the ultimate sacrifice this weekend by remembering their service. Uh, service members, your dogs. Your, that's why you have dog tags. That's how you're referred to by the elite. Dogs. You're the pawns. How is it that people are not well, uh, let me think. I didn't serve, but my brother did. He never went to war, but still shot himself in the head. So, he was the sweetest, most tender person I have ever known, and the U.S. Army ruined him. Oh, wait, I have another brother who served also without fighting. He's been fucked up in the head, paranoid and violent for 40 years ever since, and I don't even know where he is, or if he's still alive. Thanks, y'all, for the likes. I miss these guys with all my heart and soul. Uh, if you're looking for some insight about PTSD and those who don't even fight, this was an enlightening read, Tribe, on Homecoming and Belonging. I served five years. What my time in service taught me was torture is okay in the eyes of the government as long as they are brown and Muslims. I learned that we can fake intel to invade any country we want. Now after two deployments, I am left with nightmares. I don't want to be around people. I went through a period where I was a drunk. I feel like I am just a burden on the ones I love. And to top it off, I don't feel like I can love anymore. There are times I get so angry, I just want to smash shit for no reason. The effect this has had on my family is indescribable. Um, there are probably now, I'd say, 6,000 to 7,000 responses. My cousin witnessed a suicide during BASIC. A person cracked under the system. When he got back, dishonorably discharged for health, he was traumatized. Also closeted in an environment that taught him to repress it. After a long struggle and three attempts, he took his own life. My grandfather was the first to find him. He was a veteran too had lots of guns, real proud of his service. Eventually, he'd use one of them to put a bullet in his head with a framed picture of my cousin laying next to him. Okay. I woke up sobbing this morning after having a dream about that cousin. I have some of his ashes in the ink of a tattoo. In my dream, he was a spirit with a tangible body visiting me like he has in many dreams. He said this was the last one, that he needed to go and embraced me. I don't believe in spirits, but I do believe that someone was traumatized by you. And then so was he. And so was my grandpa. And then so was I. And that it lingers deep in the mind.
and the U.S. Army is just putting up this kid who is oh so proud to be a service member. Depression anxiety still can't deal with loud noises. I was assaulted by one of my superiors when I reported him with witnesses to corroborate my story. Nothing happened to him. Nothing. A year later, he stole a laptop and was then demoted. I'm worthless. I'm worth less than a laptop. This is how our military treats service members. It's the culture of good old boys who make rank and assault young women knowing they will get away with it. I watched my coworker work a 12-hour shift through panic attacks due to PTSD on the 4th of July because he couldn't afford to give his shift up due to the VA cutting his benefits and not helping him to pay for his insulin. Have you seen the insulin prices lately? $300, $500 a month. They could easily surpass $1,000. I know so many people who go into the military for the benefits, but despite what everyone goes through in the army, I guess it still isn't covered. <sighs> well, I gave you all six years, and someone who exploited five draft deferments was allowed to dishonor my service and bar people like me from uniform. I'll never forget the day when I got called off of staff duty by the police to open my apartment because my neighbor heard gunshots, only to walk in and find my husband laid out in the bed and his brains on my fucking wall. So tired of the army, shaking my head. I worked for two months at KAF's Roll 3 watching everything that came off the airfield be rolled in pieces into our beds. Sometimes we had all the pieces. Sometimes we didn't. Sometimes we had the wrong pieces. Some of those pieces were adults. Here's one piece I'll never forget. A random little leg, naked and dark-skinned, laying on the concrete. No other pieces to it just that little leg sitting there, picked up along with the rest of the human debris. Wondered where the rest was. My brother served during Desert Storm and my stepfather served in Vietnam. Both suffered through depression and PTSD for years. One wandered off to a hotel room and hung himself. The other returned with a drug habit he was unable to kick and eventually OD'd in front of me. My stepfather was physically abusive to both my mother and myself. He was even worse when he was strung out and needed a fix. When he OD'd, he died in our laps as my mother screamed for him to stop joking. I'll live that for the rest of my life. PTSD and domestic violence closely linked. Well, when my father was young, you left him to get strung out. And who they're talking to is the U.S. Army. When my father was young, you left him to get strung out in Vietnam, then made an example of him and denied him benefits. He died without medical care in a desert after serving time for you in the state of California. He was a brilliant photographer. Oh, and he screamed in his sleep when I was a child, sharing a room with him. I don't know if that caused my sleep problems or not, but I seem to have a lot of the problems the children of the Vietnam era have. To those who are reading these responses and are, not, and are horrified, which should be everyone, please read this book by David Wood. We done. We done.
the moral injury of our longest wars. Serving woke me up to the fact that this service isn't meant to protect and defend freedom and democracy, as we're told. Rather, it's about imperialist and capitalist hegemony and exploitation, which further enriches war profiteers, plutocrats, at enormous human and financial ex expense. That's what it is all about. That's it. So get off this bullshit. Thanking your service members? Why? Why? You perpetuate the lie. You help the young when you say thank you for your service and you celebrate and honor this killing machine, this American killing machine, you influence the young and they want to be honored. So they go into the military and then they come back. Then they come back. Ignored, forgotten, abused, My grandfather left to serve alongside his brothers. Before the war, he was, I'm told, a gregarious, generous man. I wouldn't know. He spoke less than a thousand words in my hearing in the 15 years we shared the planet. He died slowly from what we thought was liver cancer. We were wrong. His liver had scarred over a piece of shrapnel the army doctors never found or treated. His frail health and changed demeanor on return contributed profoundly to my grandmother's early onset dementia. I cared for her in her last months. And not knowing what year it was, she was still looking forward to being reunited with the charming, warm, warm man who would never be that man again. My dad died through complications arising from a contaminated blood transfusion after being wounded in an explosion that cost him part of his skull. But hey, that was the Air Force in 1968, not the Army. And they didn't do anything to help. Still waiting for the flag for his funeral, they promised. My father served in Vietnam, but when he finally came back to America for good and tried to get help for all the traumatizing events he had to endure, he couldn't because there was no evidence of him serving. It took him so long to finally convince someone that he served, but when he was finally getting the help he needed, he literally had to play hot potato. Doctors misdiagnosed, gave him wrong medication, and then he got diagnosed with cancer back in 2007, died in 2008. Funeral for him was such a hassle. We didn't get him the full service. He deserved, because yet again, he apparently never served. <laughs> and because we are so poor, we couldn't take legal action. To this day, 10 years later, he doesn't even have a tombstone. Our family has been treated so poorly, too, because of you, U.S. military, and the VA. My best friend Brandon is still alive. Let me start there. <clears throat> he served in the Army for four years before getting out because he couldn't take it anymore. He was a part of infantry, so He'd see battle occasionally, kept him away from his newborn baby and his wife for almost a whole year. I've watched this man stay up for three days straight and not even be tired. I've watched him have night terrors and react to loud sounds and start immediately getting into combat mode, and I'd have to talk him down back to earth. He now 
does truck driving across the country because it's the only thing that puts keeps him at peace. My grandfather came home with severe PTSD, depression, and turned to alcohol until he started having heart issues and the VA told him to cut down on the sodium. He died a year later of heart disease caused by Agent Orange and they are still refusing to give my grandma his money. My brother coming home in a casket from hanging himself. There are so many here. There are so many. My son served two years. He never came home. My friend, my friend had a kid jump off a building at boot camp and died. He was trying to kill himself and succeeded. That was the Marines, but I know this behavior is across the board. As an undiagnosed autistic person, I was harassed and punished by leadership, even though I was one of the hardest workers in the unit, ashamed how you all treat vets and do nothing about 22 suicides a day. 20 years after his tour in Vietnam, I caught a glimpse of my grand uncle doing a pre-dawn perimeter of the family house. One of the scariest and saddest things I've ever seen. He was never the same when he came back, has struggled with PTSD ever since. Wow. My uncle was turned into a sniper in Vietnam and repressed the worst memories of what he did and saw for years before falling apart and overdosing. He didn't live to live to see the way support the troops became code for covering up what you do to people here and everywhere. Yeah, uh, Vietnam vets. Um, what other service men were treated with such disdain? They were spit on when they came home. So many went homeless, treated horribly. And we have the Iraq War, and Americans are slapping a yellow ribbon on their fucking cars. I support my troops. I support my troops who are going into a country, shock and awe, destroying it with bombs. And then, you know, rounding up the Iraqis. Yeah, the Iraqis who wanted to fight for their country against U.S. servicemen, that, they were called, they were called terrorists. We were the terrorists. Support, I support my troops. Nothing could have been more sick. Looking at that, nothing could have been more sick and twisted when they didn't even support. Oh, I'm a good person, so I'm going to slap a magnet on the back of my car. That was the extent of the support. My son has horrible night terrors now. He woke up choking his wife because he thought she was attacking him. They divorced shortly after that. He has traumatic brain injury. He has compression fractures in his back that are due to having the wrong body armor for the conditions. The VA is a joke. Come over here. Click on the link below. It'll be the first link. Click on it and read. And read what this has done to service men and women, what it's done to their families, and then Think about this Memorial Day 
and what you're doing this Memorial Day. Will Americans ever get real? Will they ever stop lying to themselves, to each other? Can we ever even begin to manifest something healthy here in our country instead of this sick, twisted violence that has gone on for 93% of our time. The United States, this country's existence, the only way, the only, the only thing that is um, that makes life meaningful is the truth. The truth. All links are below.